Give it a show, huh? Yeah, a little bit. He's just a little tiny guy, but he is the right species. So here I am on July 9th, 2019, fishing ultra clear water. I gotta show you a whole bunch of different ways to catch fish in ultra clear water. I began fishing a brake line. That's got, I say brake line, it's not any brake line. It's the steepest brake line I can find on a lake. So figuring there's fish coming in and out off of that to feed this morning. This lake has got large mouth and small mouth. I hope to catch both. That first fish is on a extreme bass tackle too with quarter ounce weight. Let's go get some. He thinks he's big, but he's not. He's just a cutie, you can't resist the tube. You might notice my pink rod, that is compliments of Yoder's Custom Rods. Gave me a nice seven foot medium heavy spinning rod. It's my first time with it. Well, hopefully uh, give it a good review later. So far, so good. Yeah, they are definitely up feeding. Right, uh oh, six seventy foot of water. Get you on out of here. Major League Fishing will give me a two minute penalty for that. But we're not Major League Fishing, we're hunting or fish. There's something about this rod that Chester told me when he gave it to me was that he thought the colors really fit my personality and my character. Now I'm not sure what he's trying to get at. Maybe he's trying to say that I'm bright and beautiful. I think that's exactly what he's getting to. There we go. We might have a keeper. Keep our large mouth on the tube. With the Yoda rod. Come here, sweetie. There. Oh, look at him. So you're getting hooked right where you want him. Oh, that's back to back, baby. We the hunting for the fish. Chunky small mouth, back to back keepers there. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit the spot lock on my trolling motor so I can stay put. I'll be able to stay put all day long if I want to, thanks to that spot lock. Make that same cast. So, my tube jig, I prefer a quarter ounce head in there, nine, and it's 80% of the time. The only time I go lighter is when I'm in much skinnier water, and I'll go heavier when I'm in some waves or I'm getting a 10 foot plus. And then usually I'm up to anywhere between 5 16 and 3 8 ounce. So I just shove my bait up through. Excuse me, I just shove my weight up into it, poke the uh, head out and then tie it with a Palomar knot. I use eight pound fluorocarbon line and I like to keep bottom contact, keep my bait on the bottom when I'm fishing a tube. because so I believe this mimics, you can make it mimic different baits, uh, sometimes even bait fish, but generally speaking, you are out to mimic crawdads who are spending their time on the bottom. Well, talk about different options besides that tube bait. Clean, clear water in the summer is a spy bait. So I've made two casts of spy bait and two bites. First one come unbuttoned. This one uh, so far is still hooked. Looks like a decent small mouth. But that spy bait, I have to pay attention when I start retrieving it, is a real slow, steady retrieve. You want to bow in your line between where your rod is and when it. You see, that's a pretty good indication that he liked it, how deep he got that in his mouth. So when you retrieve this thing, it's just a long cast, and you want it, this is really for a, like a suspending fish, but it definitely will get them when they're active too. Slow and 
steady. Slow, steady retrieve. And then when they hook set and when they bite, that's the big challenge. It's kind of like a swim bait. You can't set the hook immediately. You gotta wait until you feel the weight on your rod. So kind of like when that rod bends over, boom, that's when you pop it. That's when you show them who's boss. Oh. Man, did you see that, Smalley? That's the one challenge of a spy bait. That, that perplexes a lot of fishermen. It's, they lose a lot of them. I'm not I, I'm not immune to that either. You just saw me lose that small mouth there. Now, the best advice I can give to increase the landing odds is to wait to set the hook. But that's extremely difficult to do. You really got to wait for you to feel the weight on your rod. So when you feel that fish bite, don't set the hook until that makes that fish actually makes your rod begin to bend. Then you snap back and show them who's boss. But you see there, not perfect. It's a difficult, it's, it's an exit search bait. So now I know there's fish there, but they can be difficult to land. You're gonna lose some with this. I'll tell you what, these smallmouth are eating this spy bait pretty good. I don't think I got a single largemouth on it yet, but the smallmouth are eating it. My depth is about 16 foot, and I'm casting up on a little point right now. How about that for a video game fish, huh? Ate that worm, saw him on the ground, dropped my drop, dropped down to him, and caught him. The way it's supposed to work. The way I set my drop shot rig up is I have 10 pound braided line with an eight pound fluorocarbon leader. I put a size 10 swivel to connect it to. I use a Palomar knot on both. And down here I have a number two mosquito hook. And I have a quarter ounce weight. I nose hook my baits 90% of the time. If I get around some real thick weeds, I might Texas rig it. My rod's only six foot nine. I like seven, seven and a half foot rods for almost everything else. But to keep my bait in the cone so I can watch my bait on screen, you gotta go a little shorter rod or having a shorter rod helps. My action is usually just to jiggle the bait in place, entice them to eat. Sometimes though, just jet sticking it down there in front of them will work better. Look how dark and black he is. So I, I got one ounce bait, punched a bruiser, crawl bait, and uh, fished that bait way back in there. I'm sure you saw it. And this is the thing. This this clear body of water has one small spot, basically. We have some darker water. It's a pest. Let me get out of here real quick. And that could be a magnet for fish. And believe it or not, I know this body of water and it's this, this stretch of pads always holds a couple fish. But if you have a clean body of water, clear water, but there's a small area with some lily pads and some darker water, you, you gotta fish it with either a frog or what I'm doing is punching right now. Got a one ounce uh, tungsten by Motley fishing and my three yacht trocar hook and it's pegged and my bruiser crawbait, which that fish just completely annihilated. Most predictable spot, there's a little tiny inlet coming in right there. Some pads, darker water pitched in there. You actually saw the pads move before he crushed it. Now we've come to the final way. I want to cover how to catch fish in clear water. Ah! There he goes. Docks. Oh, 
Now, that's a nice little bass. A little chunky monkey. I hope you noticed that I cast under a pontoon boat that was sitting on a shorelander. So, so that's why I have, oh, I, I got him hooked good too. That's why I have 50 pound braid. Skipping on those things so I can bring that fish right over. That's what we're after, people. How's that for the hunter fish? Boom! My 9K Elite Lures jig getting it done. Believe it or not, I actually saw that fish under there. Skipped under there, and that fish went right for it. Awesome fish. Missed that opportunity, but are you seeing what can happen in clear water underneath these docks? So I am in southern Michigan, pure Michigan fishing, ultra clear water, visibility is about 10 foot deep, kind of a greenish, beautiful turquoise colored lake, and you can still catch fish out here even in summer. Water temperature is 82 and a half degrees. It's pretty darn warm. Now when I started off on a day, I went to the sharpest brake line on the lake and I was throwing a tube. And then I was able to catch some more with the spy bait. I then went on and probed a lot of deep water, thinking that that was really gonna be the best way to catch fish today with a drop shot. All these are mainstay tactics on any kind of clean, clear water, like this in pure Michigan. What a lot of people fail to realize though is that sometimes these fish stay shallow. The largemouth bass, and I found them up shallow, and especially my best quality came up shallow. I went punching, but the best deal I had all day was on the docks. Big fish underneath those docks. Oh, if I could have caught that five pounder, ah, oh, that would have been special. But at least it did give us a bit of an acrobatic show. The jig I was using is right here. It's a 3 8 ounce 9K Elite Lures flipping jig with a chicker crawl on it. Green pumpkin all the way around. That, well, I take that back. It's not pure green pumpkin. There's a little bit of green in there. Gary Sheets gave this to me just the other day and says, Andy, you gotta throw this, they're eating this thing. Ha! He wasn't kidding. Thank you, Gary. Speaking of which, you want some 9K Elite Lures, Chatterbugs jigs? Look in the description. There's a promo code to save you 10% of their products. You love fishing. You love hunting for fish. Subscribe to this channel. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. I am heading off to Lake Champlain for the FLW Costa next week. So you should have some excellent footage from that coming up. Please subscribe, like, comment below. Tell me what you thought, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see me do in the future. Till then, I'm going to Lake Champlain. I'm going to Lake Champlain, baby. God's country. I'll see you in the water. Hey,